What's up everyone, welcome back. Uh, as you guys can see from the title, we are, uh, well you might not be able to, I don't know what the thumbnail is going to be at this point. So, we are currently at the lodge at Flack Rock. Uh, we drove all the way out here uh, last night. It was about a three hour drive. It could have been a four hour drive depending on traffic you hit in Charlotte. But we're here for a wedding today. And we're actually going to be back here again next week for another wedding doing a lighting design, no DJ. First time being here. We're going to go inside and figure out how we set up. It is early in the morning. We just finished up breakfast. Go ahead, go see. That's the setup. That's like six feet or it might be eight. So I'm going to have to put like the TV screens and movers on like either side of the outside area because like there just isn't space. They do have built-in speakers, it's not bad. Do they actually have hookups for that? Probably not. Well, we're gonna have fun with a very, very tight setup. I have Christine back there behind me, but I'm gonna go get the truck because we can load in right through here. So at least load in's really easy. We'll go out back eventually, but out back is where we're gonna be doing the lighting stuff for her next week. So, everything is loaded in. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for audio right now, because we have a Bose. I only have one of the Bose with me, one of the Bose uh, L16s, and then I have my PRX rig. I don't have the space to put double stack subs anywhere, or just subs in general, so I'm kind of thinking we're going to do something a little bit non-traditional with the speaker setup. Again, it's like a common theme now at these weddings where we have to make speakers work with certain rooms and certain sizes and certain locations. Also considering putting TVs and movers on this side of the room, possibly moving their cake out a little bit or their cake in a little bit, but I think the movers would look cool or the TVs look cool offsetting their head table. Kind of like what we did at that one wedding, but we didn't have TVs, we just had the movers. Half considering moving that out a little bit, putting the TV stands on either side with the movers. I think that'll make for a really dope setup, and that's what I'm really leaning to right now. But we're gonna focus mainly on setting up the main rack here. We will be putting the facade with the table out front. The idea right now is we'll do a half rack, like half table, not the dual side table, and we'll put the speakers behind it with one subwoofer. That should work. We're gonna get started. All right, everyone, we uh, cut the time lapse a little bit short because all we were doing after we showed you what we were doing was uh, cabling, which is not much to show, but I do want to show you guys what the cabling, how the cabling works in that because it's one of the biggest requests I keep getting is how do you connect speakers and run your wiring and whatnot, and it's very simple. You have extension cords, XLR cables, and you have IECs and sometimes power cons. And if you're doing TVs, you have HDMI cords as well. So those are the main cables. They're all universal to some degree. Let me show you guys the audio portion before I show you the lighting portion down there and we'll go through it. So starting where the source of the audio comes from, it is my basically my custom turntable booth right here with the Rain 12s, the Pioneer S9, all of it's running on my HD HP Spectra 15T, this is the X360 15T using Serato DJ Pro. This whole entire table is pre-wired, including underneath here where basically you turn the power on. So if I pulled up this lid right here, if I can get a hold of it, you can see in there it's all pre-wired to a single power conditioner. There's a USB hub in there to connect all the devices together, and the XLRs come out of the S9 and run down one of the legs. So it's all pre-wired. The power on and off is right underneath the cup holder. Little cool spot right there. And uh, my basically my U the USB from the USB hub that's inside of here, it's just an Amazon basic powered USB hub that's in there. And then the power for my laptop come out of that hole and run up to here. Now, a lot of people think that these legs are four by four posts, they are not. These are made out of plywood. So there's actually four pieces of plywood joined together. So that way they're hollow, which saves a lot on weight when this, this thing's already heavy, but saves a lot more on weight. And what it allows me to do is run down this leg and come out the bottom with my power and my two XLRs. So this is the power from the power conditioner in there, the Furman power strip, and my two XLRs. Those run back to the audio rack. There is a full video basically of me building this whole entire audio rack. It's it's overkill to say the least. If I show you guys a view here, the facade's blocking it. This is the ADJ four panel white facade. Down here we have our XLR ports as well as the power in for the whole entire rack unit. So these are all of the XLRs that go out to the speakers as well as the XLRs in. All of the audio comes in to this, the Yamaha MG12 mixer. So all of my DJ inputs come in right here, my left and right from the audio booth. As you can see right here, we have them pan to the left, pan to the right, and then we can do all of our EQing here if we wish. We have our gains, and then next to it we have the wireless mic one and two that's 
built into the rack, as well as a number five input that's on the back of the table. And then we have additional inputs if we need to do anything there. We can do outs to videographers or whatnot. This thing is basically the hub of all of my audio, and it's on this nice, cool little sliding tray, so you can pull it out and push it away when you're done, and it locks in. Coming down, after the audio processes through the Yamaha MG12, it goes out on those back two XLRs and comes in down here to the uh, DBX Drive Rack PA2 right there. This is basically a complete overkill audio processing unit. It allows me to control everything I could ever want. It's got anti-feedback suppression, GEQ. I can do individual outputs. I have three individual outputs that I can rock with. So right now I'm using one output to my highs and one output to my lows. And inside of here I can set limiters, set gains, set crossovers, set delays. I can basically do a whole bunch of stuff. If you want more info on this, check out the video I made. It walks through how you set this up. It, it's controlled with a phone or a tablet. Um, there's a Wi-Fi router up here. It doesn't have internet, but that router connects to this, so that way you can connect your phone, iPad, or your um, desktop computer to control the drive rack. So go check out that video if you want more info on that. So once it po processes through the drive rack, it goes out to the speakers. So the XLRs come out the back and they go into the inputs on the speakers. And then on the power side, you have IECs that plug in here, plug in there, and those run to the power. Now all the power in this rack is ran off of the Furman power conditioner right here. You can read out of your voltage. We got 118 volts here. That's not the greatest, but it's doable. You want to, you would really, 120 is like amazing. As long as you're over 110 though, you're good to go. It's got lights too, so if you need to see in the dark, you can. Hooked into the power conditioner is this power strip down here. So the front side has all the power, the back side has all the XLRs. So right there basically is all of our power situation that we uh, need. So you can turn it on, turn it off, but I can run all my outputs to the speakers, run it to my laptop, etc. So all the power feeds through this unit right here. It's awesome. Also, I mentioned microphones wise, we have the Audio Technica 3000 4th gens. We got two of them hooked up right here. Those come to the antennas up here, these big boys right here. Basically, I have an antenna combiner inside the rack that runs all that. But basically, this thing is my central control station. It's even got Show Express built into it, the Shave Show Express X24. That runs up here, plugs into the laptop, good to go. This, this whole entire unit is what has made me be able to set up extremely, extremely fast, and I love it. Speaker-wise, I did say it was gonna be a little weird. We have two JBL PRX 712s very squished together, very squished together. I do, I'm not a fan of doing that, but that's how it worked out. And then sub-wise, we're only rocking one sub tonight, JBL PRX 715XLF. Normally, you guys know I run two. This room does not need two subs. This sub be plenty for the night. I also have hooked up here, this is a output from the drive rack. I have three outputs, like I said, so one goes to the sub, one goes to the highs. I'm running another one to the Sennheiser wireless uh, dongles right here. What I'm going to attempt to do is run a uh, two-fold here. One an output and two an input. So right now I have it set up for cocktail where this is going to be an output. So I'm going to play my music for cocktail in here and it's going to come out here to the lounge where they're doing cocktail. I'm going to plug it into the JBL Eon 1 Pro Compact or Eon Compact, whatever. Battery powered speaker, hook it up to XLR, the wireless dongle, play the cocktail music. Then we're gonna use this transmitter because up there we're gonna be playing a video and we need the audio from that video to get to the speakers. So we're gonna run a wireless dongle and see how that works. We're actually gonna try it out now before we get to later on and it doesn't work. So we're gonna try it out, make sure it works before we actually do that. But coming up to the speaker, or the TV setup, we have our two 60 inch TVs, Brittany and Jimmy tonight, on top of our Global Trust totems. So you have the Global Trust totems on top. We have my favorite movers ever, they're the ADJ Inno Spot Pros. They're discontinued, but if you can find these used, they're badass movers. I got eight of them, love them. The totems, of course, have the built-in power conduit built into them. Right here is the TV mount. This is just the generic Amazon TV mount with two of the basically the truss clamps connected to it, holds the TV, HDMI out, HDMIs run to an HDMI splitter down there, HDMI splitter, HDMI splitter then runs up to the laptop where we are running remix video. So I showed this in the last gig log, but this is remix video. Right there is my HDMI splitter or connector dongle because this laptop is like the MacBooks where it doesn't have any ports. Well, it still has a normal USB port, so it's slightly better. You can control all your scenes for all your video. These are Samsung 58 inch TVs, two of them. Love them. It cost me a little over a thousand bucks for both of them. Good deal. Highly recommend if you're looking at TVs. I did a lot of research by reaching out to JBook, reaching out to Bar and seeing like what everyone's using for TVs because Honestly, I thought they were using like 80 inch TVs, which they're not. Bar's using 60 inch TVs, and so is JBook. I think JBook's using 55 inch TVs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they were highly right, because any bigger than this, 
would look proportionally off for these totems. 60 inches on a normal standard totem looks good. Now, if you're like uh, Jason Janai and you're doing the big taller totems above you on the backside, I know he uses 70 inch screens, so you could definitely get away with that if you had taller totems, it would look a little more proportional, but definitely for the smaller ones, 60 inches I think is plenty. 70 would just look overkill. But anyways, that's all for the setup inside. We have to set up the ceremony, so we're gonna go basically go set up the table and just lay everything out there but we'll worry about testing all that out later on when we come back. But uh, yeah, but I didn't mention we're three hours away. We got a hotel because I'm, I'm not gonna drive three hours and drive back three hours. Even though I've done it before because I had a wedding the next day, um, I'd rather get a hotel. It's well worth it if you're doing it, just work it into your price, get a hotel. We're gonna go do that and now I'll catch back up with you guys when uh, time for the wedding. And uh, this is where the ceremony is gonna take place. It's also where next week, uh, next week's gig log, you're gonna see we're gonna be running, we're gonna be running this in crazy, crazy lighting drape setup. So the venue's got hooks right here and they normally have contractors come in, right? And they'll hook to these and they'll run a line and then they'll do lighting. So we're coming in and we're doing this crazy thing. It's going to be basically three wires they're gonna come down through here and we're gonna basically drape lights left to right, both twinkle bistro lights and we're also even gonna put in actual like a shivari drapery across this. So basically we're gonna mount to these two trees over here and then I gotta find the third spot. I haven't really found it yet because I'm trying to figure out how this is all gonna work. That's what we're doing. What's up everyone, we're back. I'm dressed, all dressed, got my jacket inside. It's nice and cool outside though. You can tell right there we have the ceremony audio set up. So let me walk you through it. Cord running all the way, powers over there. We have the good old ceremony audio rack with our StarTech, but this is the Colorado Sound and Lighting modified with the DC battery. So this has battery backup. So that if you lose power, everything keeps running. You're good to go. Everything just keeps going. Uh, two Audio Technica 3000 4th Gens, Yamaha MG12 or MG06 FX. HP Spectra 14T laptop, love this thing. LD Systems Maui 5 Go, best battery powered speaker in the world. Yes, it is very beautiful out here. I'm excited for the lighting and the sheer drapes that we're doing out here next week. Back inside, all lights on, TV's on. Really cool thing we're doing, uh, I've done this a few times now with like a wireless cocktail speaker. So using the drive rack down there, we got three outputs. So running off the mid output, I come up here to my Sennheiser wireless dongle, which connects to the speaker out here, which we have the JBL Eon One Compact. Beautiful, works great. And basically what that allows me to do is seamlessly transition cocktail music to in here later on. So we just turn the highs on and we have music in here. Tonight, so if you need anything, please let me know. Let's make some big noise here for our maid of honor, Tammy, our best man, Jimmy's dad, Jimmy. Just for the second time tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, give it up for us. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright guys, we forgot to start the GoPro for, uh, I was pointing out, we have desserts over there. Perks of doing weddings, you get little desserts and food to take home because no one else will take it home. And this lighting is actually pretty good, but uh, all the gear is loaded up in the trailer. Uh, pretty fun wedding, it wasn't as big as what they expected. They were, they were planning like 100 people and only about 50 showed up, so the fact that we had like 20 people dancing for a good portion of the night, um, there was a lot of dancing for the most part. Um, it was a good time, and uh, we're back here next week for the lighting only event. What's up guys? Uh, I think this either is going to be a continuation of last week when we were here, because it's the next week, um, or it's a new one, but welcome back to the video and everything. We got uh, myself, we got Drizzy Drake, and we got Christine. We're back out here in Flat Rock, North Carolina, again, for uh, lighting only. I'm going to move the trailer, because it's easy. There's a space to wheel it down through so i'm just gonna pull it forward and we're just gonna wheel it, wheel it around we're out front because the easiest way to load in is food to side but uh we're doing string lighting and all that fun stuff so i'm gonna move the trailer around we'll film some time lapses and we'll explain a little bit of what we're doing but to be honest we don't really know what we're doing because it's kind of new all right so trailer unloaded uh as you guys saw there's not much we had two rock and rollers full of gear one of those is full of all the basically the pipes and base plates that we need and then we had to carry some heavy base plates around the back and some ladders and we got a table to help with setup and stuff like that. But uh, I'm just cruising around the back of the parking lot right now to park in the back here where it's nice and shady. Keep the truck nice and cool for this evening. Pull around here, park it up, walk inside and uh, head over there and we're gonna get started with the string lighting. Currently right now we're already busting out the pipe and drape. But yeah, I'll show you guys the whole setup. If you guys watched the last part of this video or the last gig vlog, I don't know if it's gonna be combined or whatnot. I went over a little bit of what we're doing. I love that truck. We just drove three hours up here. So comfortable. Pulls that trailer like it's nothing. Perfect. Oh, plug. Go check out the Taco Rick channel. If you guys didn't know, I have a whole video channel or a whole channel dedicated to that truck. And uh, that channel actually has 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 subscribers as of now, which is insane. It's my second channel now to be over 10,000. This is obviously the first one. We're on the way to 50K, but that one's got 10K and that one's growing strong as well. Love it. So here's a little before everything of what's gonna happen here. We're working right now getting started. I've explained it before, but there are hooks over here that we're gonna use to run our straight line, our middle line, and it's gonna go 125 feet back to the big, big tree in the back there, which is up above the waterfall. And then we're gonna do two other lines off these other two trees back to some heavy base plates on either side. And then we got a bunch of bistro lighting in here and we have sheer drapes that we're gonna be hanging and we have twinkle lights in one of these as well somewhere in this one this one's got the twinkle lights as well twinkle lights clips all that good stuff so we're gonna get started on that we got the jbl eon one compact out here to jam out our drapes are in there we got our ladders this ladder goes up to 12 feet in the air this one goes up to eight or something like that and uh drake and christina working on pipe and drape Sometime later, we are finished. The setup is done. Looks good, we got six basically sheer drapes coming out on either side. We got twinkle lights in the sheer drapes that you'll see later on at night. Bistro lighting in between for lighting. This looks epic. Epic, 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 epic. There you guys go, check it out. Got all of our drapes done. A lot of what you're looking at is provided by Georgia Expo. So these drapes are sheer drapes from Georgia Expo. Our base plates back there in poles are Georgia Expo. The wires, this is a hanging kit for um, Amazon for string lighting. 
waterfall looking awesome. Got some koi fish down in there, big koi fish. String lighting, these are, these are actually the plastic ones. So these are plastic, non-breakable LED. Yeah, turned out great. Like I said, three wires, we hung our drapes, looks good. Welcome back. Trailer's there, truck's over there. Um, it is currently 11 p.m. Supposedly it's supposed to be over. I don't hear any music, so I think it's over. Check it out, check it out. Time to tear it down. So breakdown has happened, but I do want to show you guys a little bit more of the details of what we did. Base plates, heavy, rubber weights on either side. We're actually strapped down to the tree as well for additional support. Lines running down through. You can see the twinkle lights on either one now. Looks awesome, looks epic. Giving them plenty of light to work with. But yeah, we're gonna start uh, tearing it down. All of this, all coming down. We busting it, we busting it out. But as you guys can see, we broke all this down in literally an hour. That's our Roby spotlight here so we can see what we're doing. But Drizzy Drake busting it out, carrying these big, heavy ass 30 pound weights and 90 pound base plates let's get it so i'm not sure if you guys saw at the beginning of the night but this is it and we didn't even use everything like the facade something that just stays in here ladders base plates heavy base plates drapes lights extra extension cords like that's it that's all there was but check the light can you see the sweat the humidity is still relentless even though it's 67 degrees luckily we got a hotel right there literally right there so go go take a shower go to bed wake up next morning drive back to greensboro Anyways guys, if you like this video, be sure to slap a like, hit the subscribe button, comment down below, all that good stuff. It's late and uh, I'm tired. So keep the record spinning. We'll see you guys next time. Drake. See ya. Peace.